made from an authentic Boggs family home recipe, it's Trap Live with Bill Boggs, joined today by our very funny guest comedian Tom Cotter, with special guests George Carlin and Rodney Dangerfield, who cost everybody's alive here on Trap Live. Trap Live is brought to you today by the satirical novel, The Adventures of Spike the Wonder Dog, as told to Bill Boggs packed with the kinds of laughs we all need right now. Hailed by Winston Groom, author of Forrest Gump, as brilliant original satire and comedic wizardry, go to orderspike.com today and pre-order The Adventures of Spike the Wonder Dog, shipping to your own private quarantine location soon. I'm your announcer, director, former man about town, but now prisoner in my own home, just like you, Jeff Leibowitz. And now, here's the best talk show host to be trapped live with, Bill Boggs. Oh, Jeff, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, we decided with everything, the horrible things that are going on, um, four years ago, I left television. Uh, the show I was on, My Generation on PBS, got canceled, and I just wanted to focus on writing, but... We just, a week ago tonight, we decided we want to do a television show, launch a show, and one week later, thanks to Jeff Leibowitz, Captain Leibowitz, <laughs> put this together. He's our director, our announcer. The man has actually landed jet planes on aircraft carriers. If he can do that, he can get the show on the air in a week, which he did. And really, what basically the goal here is, is to entertain the folks. You know, if... If, if in the process of watching us, and as you know, we've got Tom Cotter, we have Dangerfield, we have Carlin coming up. Germinating essence of this show is to get some laughs. They're not a political show. That, there's enough of that out there, right? Um, but if, if as a result of doing this, like one person, well, there's probably only one person watching right now, but what, one person, if, the, if their load could be lightened just a little bit, then we've, then we've actually actually did our job. You know, I, we sent out a lot of promos, all of our friends, Lady Jane and I, hundreds and hundreds, we got this stuff back. Oh yeah, I'll be, I'll be trying to watch. What, what does that mean? You know, I'm gonna be trying to watch. What else do you have to do? Stare at the wall? You know, we have a party and someone says, I'm gonna try to make your party. That really means, you know, I wanna go to the movies, but you'll think I might come. Anyway, Jeff, we're here in Palm Beach. We You're are. in West Palm Beach. This is all I have left. <laughs> this is my lifeline right here. How's your How's your supply doing? We're doing okay. Are you good? We, uh, by are. the way, we, I'm not. We have a good supply. Your Your audio is very low. All right. Yeah, check your audio there. Uh, uh, while you're doing that, I'm going to show a couple things, and then we get to Tom Cotter. Some very some things in the Palm Beach Post. It sounds so elegant. Very reassuring headlining today. <laughs> Hurricane forecast, right? We got three coming up. Um, I've noticed that they've been running these, the food section has this section just on takeout food, stuff you could never make at home, right? You look at this and you think, the stuff I'm making, I, got, I have to have takeout. And then the last thing is, Every day in the Palm Beach Post, this is the one that's like I'm most incredulous about. Cru ads for cruises every single day. I, I don't really think, Jeff, to you, that a lot of people who are getting their stimulus package are going to be like spending their check on a cruise now. It would seem to me a cruise would be the last place you'd want to be, I even know, if you were the captain of an every, aircraft carrier. Every day for the cruise. All right, so Tom Cotter is our guest. Let me give you an introduction to Tom. Direct from Stony Point, New York. He's been on many different televisions. He's one of my favorite comedians, Tom Cotter. America's Got Talent. Um, his terrific hot book, Bad Dad, winner of the Boston and the Vegas comedy festivals. It's very good. He had his own comedy special on uh, Comedy Central, and he's married to a comedian. His wife is a comedian. Welcome, everybody. You, you, the one who's watching. Tom Cotter. Of course. <laughs> Tom, there you go, buddy. So how are you spending your time, Tom? Uh, we're quarantined here in Stony Point. 
You know, for some reason, I've got, maybe it's mute. Huh? For some reason, the audio is real low on my thing. I want to get this up. Jeff, can you hear me? Yeah, okay. You're That's, fine, Tom. Excellent. That's better. But so, what, where are you now in your house? Where is this? This right now is my office. This is my office. That's my friend and uh, my ventriloquist dummy. This is the desk. This is where it all happens. That's the cat that's asleep. And uh, this is what we do all day. Did you, did you uh, ever work in ventriloquism? Like when you were in eighth grade, like I did? Where you were yes. Like, yep. I messed around with it. I've never, ever taken it on stage. Uh, yeah. You know, but I also play a little guitar. I've never taken a guitar on stage. I juggle. I haven't done that on stage. I'm just a lowly monologist. Yeah, but no, well, you're a mighty good monologist. So what is, what are, have you been doing writing? Have you been, can you project a, a comedic point of view into this dreadful COVID-19 situation that we're in? Uh, you know, laughter is the best medicine until we find a vaccine for this stupid COVID-19. So I'm trying. We're doing a lot of these webisode things, and uh, trying, but it's not the same. You need an audience. And that's why I fear that our business will be the last one to come back at the end of this. Broadway, live music, live comedy, because people just don't want to assemble in groups. And can you blame them? I, I don't think I can. But wait a second, Tom. If when the day comes, whenever we're on the other side of this thing, and it is like safe to go out and play again. Don't you think people are going to want to be in groups? Maybe they won't be hugging and shaking hands, but don't you think there'll be a sense of like Jane, for example, my beloved Jane got dressed up because she's hoping to make an appearance her fans are waiting for. Her. She said, I feel like I have to go out tonight. So I think I'll parade her around like the parking lot so she can be seen. Well, first of all, warm regards to Jane, uh, and hopefully we'll all be able to do that. Your lips to God's ears. I hope people want to go out to comedy clubs. But comedy clubs are very, as you know, incestuous little confined spaces, usually in a basement somewhere, and someone's always on top of you. And some news report said that a sneeze could go 27 feet the other day. So, you know, if you're nervous about germs, that's probably not the place you want to be. What, what, what's it like? Spending, what's it like spending so much time with your kids? We are driving each other crazy. We're playing a lot of board games. Um, we what are, which what, one? Which games you play? We played Monopoly uh, a couple of times because that's long. It takes like three hours to play a decent game of Monopoly. We play a lot of cribbage in our family. That's a big thing on both sides of the family. We're cribbage. What is, what is cribbage? It's an old Navy game. Ask Jeff. Jeff probably knows. It's a, a right. Navy game. Yep. There's what, a, board, a peg board and there's cards. There's a lot of like poker analogies because there's straights and runs and flushes and things like that. And it, you count your number on the peg board and it just chews the clock. Yep. You know, Tom, I, I, I've always liked your work. You know, I've worked together several times at the Forest Club. Mm. And uh, there it's only been short bits, but Dane and I saw your, your full act uh, at a comedy club in Aruba. Uh, we wanted to make it convenient on ourselves to see you, so we went to Aruba, you know, <laughs> to see you. I, I, I love the whole thing. And your wife uh, was also on the bill that night. So, Jane, come on in here. Jane actually has a question for you. No, oh, okay. Not uh, Mary Louise. Right. She's coming in here. Right, here I am. Yeah. Hi, there. Hi, Jane. How are you? Good, Tom. How are you? You look terrific. And I love the jacket. As do you. Thank you. Nice. So here's what I'm thinking. You, you, you and your wife, both comedians, are you doing a lot of shtick with each other? Are you writing up new routines and practicing? We do the Lucy Festival every year up in Jamestown, New York, which is where now the National Comedy Center is. And we've been fans of that festival for over 10 years now, and we keep going. And they always ask us, because people get nostalgic for the Lucy Desi thing or the Burns and Allen or the Nichols and May. And so there's there just aren't that many married comedy couples out there now. So we get pulled in to do that quite often. It's harder than it sounds though, because Carrie's style is very uh, storytelling. It's a long story with a big payoff at the end. And as you know, I'm an ADD guy, so I'm a one-liner guy. And so it's hard to mesh those two together uh, into you know a, a funny comedy act, but we've somehow managed to do it a few times. We've done it on TV a couple times, and we'll uh, keep doing it when we're asked. I like working with her. Uh, yeah. uh, go ahead, Jane. What? 
no, I was going to say, you know, Bill, Bill, you know, is very entertaining. You know, yes. Light, light it's, 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 it's a, it's it, a quantitative it, thing. I think we call it. It's never boring. He always comes up with little thick things oh, yeah. to, to, to make me laugh. This is a new one. You're, you can try this. This is a new one. This is called um, getting to know you, right? So what you do is you begin by singing. You look at your beloved and you sing, getting to know you, getting to know all about you, getting to like you, getting to hope you like me. Then Jane. Yes. Jane. Yes. Jane. <laughs> Yes, Bill. Have you ever had a boil? <laughs> because, wait, what's the answer? What's the no. answer? Because <laughs> of all the beautiful and new things I'm learning about you day by day. So you, that's that's called getting to know you. I have others. I like it. That's that's all I'm doing here. But I have, I have a that one's got legs. I'd say run with it. <laughs> so I asked you when, when we were talking earlier in the week, comedian who may have uh, influenced you, or favorite comedians, and you said uh, George Carlin. We've got a clip of George Carlin that, that uh, Jeff Leibowitz has ready. Um, tell us why Carlin. This show is going to feature comedians and other funny people talking about people they've, whom they've admired and people have inspired them. So the shows will include... All of our shows, we have Dangerfield and, and, and Carl and that. Uh, why don't you tell us what there was about uh, Carl? Well, George is, uh, you know, when I was growing up, we had these things called albums. And uh, I snuck them into my house. And we would go up to the third floor of my house, and we would put a blanket over us, like the Cone of Silence from uh, Get Smart. I don't know if you remember that. Because yeah. my parents heard that I was listening to George Carlin's filthy comedy i would be grounded for a decade so we Is would true? yeah we would get in big trouble really yeah and it would uh, the album was indecent exposure it's the one with him on a trench coat on the front and i could recite that when i was 12 years old cover to cover i knew every line from it i thought he was just so funny it was so funny for me an irish catholic kid growing up outside of boston to hear a guy get up there and swear you know so uh i was blown away by it and I just found it very, and that's why I liked Richard Pryor at the time too, those two. And then um, Carlin is, you know, he's kind of from the uh, working class family, Irish guy, you know, way back to the hippy dippy weatherman and all those things. I loved him. I loved his transition and now he tells story. he used to tell stories about getting arrested when he stepped off stage at a country fair. I'm friends with his daughter, Ke Kelly Carlin now. And all of her archives are up at the National Comedy Museum up in Jamestown. And I urge people to visit that museum when they get a chance. And Carlin is, there's a whole shrine to him as well there should be. He really was groundbreaking and absolutely one of my favorites and, and a big influence on both. Yeah, I agree with you. Big influence a lot of people. And a wonderful use of, like Seinfeld, a wonderful use, different, totally, but a wonderful use of language. Oh, yeah. You know, it just poured out of him, but it was very, very well crafted. I saw him. But, but my son Trevor, Trevor and I saw him in Vegas, the full act. Wow. And uh, Jeff was uh, hip enough to pull out uh, what part of what we saw that night, actually. And this is so much against the way it is right now. But this is uh, Carlin uh, talking about germs. Like, you know, people aren't even, we know what we're doing right now. Well, Jeff, take us to the clip, okay? And, and keep in mind that this was recorded in 1999. Yes. Okay. 20 years ago. Here we go. All right. Here we go. What we have now is a completely neurotic population obsessed with security Technical and safety problem. and crime and drugs and cleanliness and hygiene now and germs. On. There's another thing. Germs. Where did this sudden fear now is a completely... We're listening to the record anyway. It's like listening to the yeah, record. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm now moving it into the right place where it's supposed to be. And okay. now, we, now we will play it properly. Sure. What we have now is a completely neurotic population obsessed with security and safety and crime and drugs and cleanliness and hygiene and germs. There's another thing. Germs. 
Where did this sudden fear of germs come from in this country? Have you noticed this? The media constantly running stories about all the latest infections, salmonella, E. coli, hantavirus, bird flu, and, and Americans are, they panic easily, so now everybody's running around scrubbing this and spraying that and overcooking their food and repeatedly washing their hands, trying to avoid all contact with germs. It's ridiculous and it goes to ridiculous lengths in prisons. Before they give you a lethal injection, they swab your arm with alcohol. <laughs> it's true. It's true. <laughs> Besides, what do you think you have an immune system for? It's for killing germs. But it needs practice. It needs germs to practice on. So, so listen. So listen. If you kill all the germs around you and live a completely sterile life, then when germs do come along, you're not going to be prepared. And never mind ordinary germs, what are you going to do when some super virus comes along that turns your vital organs into liquid shit? <laughs> I'll tell you what you're going to do. You're going to get sick, you're going to die, and you're going to deserve it because you're fucking weak and you got a fucking weak immune system. <laughs> now, uh, uh, what? Tremendous. Now, Tom, from... Can, is there any way you can deconstruct what it took for him to get there to that point? Boom, 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 boom. Just give us a professional, if you will, analysis of it. Just he is the most prolific guy in the world as far as writing. He did uh, 14 comedy specials on HBO. I think the next one is George, is uh, Car uh, um, I'm sorry, uh, the guy from Long Island, Klein. Robert Klein has seven. So seven is enough right there. Robert Clyde seven, that means he did seven hours of material, new material. I don't have seven hours of material. Carlin doubled that. He had 14 hours and he was just an unbelievable workaholic. And sometimes you just substitute the word with work and elk, but he was a festive guy, but he worked all the time, all the time. And there are stories of him reaching out to young comics and open micers and asking them to watch his set and getting their opinion valuing their opinion because you know it didn't matter where you were on the on the the ladder he always respected a comedian's opinion and he just worked so much 14 hours of brand new material is is i don't know if anyone will ever top that and if you watch that set that you just watched before the longer version of that is he talks about he and his friends swimming in the hudson river and that's how they built up their immune system right. because, you know the epa didn't start until 1970 so up until then when he was a kid they were putting everything in that river, sludge, sewage, every company was dumping their crap in there and they swam in it all the time during the summer, every day. And he said, that's why he had the immune system. What, Tom, the, uh, we have a choice here. I'm going to, it's like dealer's choice. I'm going to give it to you. You want to take a little look at you on stage or would you rather us go to Dangerfield right now? You have you, a dealer's choice. Your your choice. You have to yield to the uh, to the king, and that's Dangerfield. You got to well, go to him. I've yeah. seen me. Then we have to set it up this way. And I know it's a well-told story, my friend. But <laughs> Eric has got talent. You finished. Well, as Jeff Lee was put, what you, you finished. It was the first he, he was the 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 human winner. The human winner. He was the human winner of America's Got Talent. No no question about it. I like to say I was the top human finisher. That's how I. <laughs> yes, that's right. I like winner better. Anyway, <laughs> you, I mean, you made it all the way to the finals. And that is, you know, it's like playing in the finals at Wimbledon, and someone wins, and someone loses, and you lost. The dog. Um, our our show here is sponsored by a dog, and it's kind of you even to come on. What my question is getting back to you know, being a talk show host is this: when they announce that the dog had won. In all honesty, what did you feel? Well, first of all, it wasn't a dog. It was 23 dogs. It was called the Olate Dogs, plural. Uh, and they were a great act. And W.C. Fields famously said, never try to follow a kid act or a, a, an animal act. And he was right. So I, just standing there, I had no idea I'd even make the quarterfinals, let alone the semis or the finals. And to be standing there at the end was surreal. Um, and uh, I yield. America loves dogs. I love dogs. I get it. Uh, they won. My thought, honestly, was don't make an ass out of yourself. You know, if you win, win graciously. If you lose, don't look like a douche. And I hope that I accomplished both. The, uh, 
when you stand there, when you, you move up into something like talk, I love always like to talk about the process and, and, and what goes into work of a singer, a musician, a writer, whatever that is. But when you took the stage, say, the semifinals and then onto the corner final, the level of nerves was dominated by what? Pure craft? How did it feel? It's like if you talk to any of the hosts, whoever, most of them who posted the Academy Awards, like Whoopi Goldberg, inside, you know, as cool as she was, really tense. By the way, she said that's the only night of her life that she ever wore a bra. It's like posting the <laughs> proof. In an interview, I got that out of her. Not that anyone was interested, but I somehow got that out of her. Take us to take us to the stage, Tom. There you are, you're coming out. It's semifinals or the finals, America's Got Talent. What's going on inside? You know your material. What's, what are you feeling? Well, to your point, I did know my material, so I was confident in that part. But the rest of it is terrifying. You know, our worst rating was 13 million, and that was for a rerun. So we were getting huge numbers because it was the first year of Howard Stern as a, a judge. And at the Olympics were on the summer in NBC that year. So we had unbelievable numbers watching the show. And when I do a show anywhere, if I do a show in Florida or somewhere, there's a lot of people I don't know. They're all uh, nice people, but they're, they, I don't have an emotional connection to them. This time, everyone, my dad was watching, my wife, my children, my brothers, my sisters, my old school teachers. So I was terrified. I lost 15 pounds that summer. I had Ooh. acne and diarrhea, more than you needed to know. But I was just <laughs> terrified. I was, you know, I, I, none of my clothes fit. I, I was, uh, it was a very terrifying experience. But you rely on your, you know, I've been at it for a while. So you just press yeah. play, spit it out, and hope that the audience yeah. likes it. All right. With, with going back to the 20, however, 23 dogs beating you, Jeff, can you take us all the way back to tonight's show with Johnny Carson uh, and Rodney Dangerfield talking about dog acts? Here we go. We're on our way. You know, I love dogs. You love dogs. I, love huh? dogs. I, love dogs. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. I love dogs. Yeah. Dogs of every. I work with some great dog acts. Great, great mm -hmm. dog acts, Johnny. Great uh -huh. dog acts. I work with Carmine's Canines. Carmine's Canines. <laughs> Yeah, uh, great acts. Uh, Laverne and her boxer. Oh, oh. <laughs> Laverne and her boxer. I miss yeah, that act. Sure. And show business, show business, tough business. Dog acts. You're a great act. Yeah. And show you know how tough show business oh, is. Oh, it's tough show business. Oh, boy. Sometimes I think back of all the women I had to sleep with to get where I got. <laughs> but, okay. People have problems all over the problems place. Problems all over. But I told you before, and I'm going to tell you again, Johnny. Okay. Help. Help is The whole thing is help. You've got to take care of it. As long as you have your help. I take care of you. I gotta think young, hobbies, interests. You have to think young. Right. I try to think young all the time. You know what I mean? I always do that. Can I have a cigarette? Too? Certainly. Thanks, it's not good much. for your health. Though. Well, I got a crazy God, doctor told me to keep smoking if I want to stop chewing gum. So what do I do? <laughs> Is that the same doctor you? Uh... So doctor Vinnie Bombard. Vinnie Bombard. <laughs> Uh, health is important. I got into astrology lately. They got a new interest. Oh, did you? Oh, astrology is very you follow good. Follow that closely. You meet huh? girls, that's all they talk about. It's astrology. Astrology. Sure, astrology. What sign are you on? Do you know? That's what they talk about. I'll tell you, the girls I meet, they're all born under the same sign. Well, what's that? For rent. I... <laughs> Yeah, it's great to see Carson again, really. How great is that? And Dom uh, Delis on the other side. And they're both yeah, out <clears throat> The same. I believe the same time that I was in Vegas with uh, wherever we saw Dangerfield's act, and it was it must have been a hundred jokes, Tom. Ding, 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 just nonstop. I love that style. I love rapid fire. He's got a lot of misdirection. So yeah, he clearly uh, was someone that I emulated when I started. What a great guy. I mean, uh, you know what we we'll do is we'll, we'll, we'll go to our we actually are do a commercial here. Go to the commercial, right, Jeff? We can we go to the commercial. Back. Yes, sir. And then we'll come back and look at Tom in action and uh, roll along on Trap Live. We're all trapped together, so. All right. And now a word from our sponsor, as they say. Uh, no, actually, there won't be a word from our sponsor. Another technical error on the part of the director. Let me uh, let me fix that real quick. Sure you got that. I have to share that screen. Otherwise, you can't see it. Modern marvels of technology. 
Winston Groom, author of Forrest Gump, says that Bill Boggs and his friend Spike the Wonder Dog unleash comedic wizardry in this madcap, highly entertaining, satiric novel. Spike is the newest canine literary hero to take on the world with hilarious results. Yes, we are. And we're back. Yes, the, the, only, the only show in the history of television sponsored by a book narrated by a dog. You know, all those years of being a talk show host, Tom and Jeff, I would end up holding up books. I've sometimes in the middle of the night, I'd give a dream, my arms would go like this. Now, all I have to do to promote my book is this. There it is. Anyway, you know, I was interested, Tom, and you're potentially doing a narration of the dog when Spike narrates the book, and I was going to do the other characters and maybe get Ricky Goldberg to do a couple of the characters. But now, because of the virus, it's going to be recorded by uh, one of their studio recorders at home, something like that. I'm sorry we didn't get a chance uh, technically to uh, do that. Did you read any of the book, Tom? Any I did. And uh, first of all, I, I found it passive aggressive to ask me to narrate a dog book. But, I'll get over that. Uh, but it was really great. The, the parts I read getting up to it. First of all, uh, was it mushrooms or acid? I couldn't remember which one was. Uh, that's still a side in it. Book yeah, all right. I don't want to let anything out of the bag, but that's, that's yeah. a nice key ingredient in the whole thing. Not in that uh, bag. All right, let's. Uh, can, Jeff, are we set to go to, to uh, Tom in action here? We uh, we, about we, other comedians. Uh, we certainly can. Um, Give me one second to set it up here. Cool, or Rodney. Hey, I'm all right now, but last week I was in rough shape. Yeah, I like to do things you feel myself. You know, I, it's never funny, but that, it's all the rhythms. Isn't that it? My wife, nothing but trouble, my wife. <laughs> okay, we ready to go? Sure. Yeah, where, let's just roll it, and then Tom can tell us where we were and everything having to do with it, or you know where it is. Okay, here we go. I'm the youngest in my family. I was always getting beaten up by the two oldest, mom and dad. And I used to get smacked around by these green berets that lived in our neighborhood. Some people call them Girl Scouts, whatever. <laughs> the morning of my 16th birthday, my whole family tried to surprise me with a car, but they missed. And, uh, every Saturday morning in our neighborhood, we would have this huge water balloon fight. And every Friday night, I'd put mine in the freezer, so I'd win. And after that, all the mothers in the neighborhood would take turns spanking me. It was awesome. Uh, in high school, I got caught shoplifting once from a car dealership. It was a Buick. And my father said to me through the bars of the jail cell, because he was in the next cell, he said, you're no son of mine, which hurt me. And it confused my mother. She was like, damn it, how did he know? I was a bad kid. I would sneak over to my neighbor's house late at night and I would bounce up and down on their trampoline. That was their daughter's name, Arlene. And that's my time, everybody. Thank you very much. Wow. Oh, that's good, Tom. That's really good. Thank you. What, what were you thinking as we, you were watching that? Um, yeah, no one likes to watch them themselves. You know, we're all our own worst critics. And so it's always. In my mind, watching that, I'm like, why did I put the sticker on my pants? You know, they give you a contestant sticker. Most people put it on their jacket. I thought it would be cool to put it on my pants. I look like a moron with the sticker on my pants. It's funny. I thought there was a previous joke or something no. on another show about the bandage on the outside. Could have been. Could have been. But it wasn't. That was my first audition for America's Got Talent that season. So that was the first they say it's the first, it's never the first. You're always before a producer before that, then they deem whether or not you should go up in front of the NBC executives and the show producers. And then once they give you the green light, then you go in front of the celebrities. So technically it was my third AGT audition, but the first one that aired. Wow. Tom, I see you were good enough to put a, uh, a mask on your the textile back there. Oh yeah, well, safety, safety first. <laughs> I'm actually, uh, I'm wearing a surgical mask right now, but I'm wearing it as a thong. And I feel, <laughs> I feel pretty safe. Well, you know, not safe. I feel more pretty. One of, one of the things that's happening, a couple of things happening here, you know, we're, we're in Palm Beach. Yeah. You're, you're in New York, right? Stone, where is it? 
Stony, Stony Point, but we're 30 miles from Midtown, so we're in the belly of the beast. Here, there's no electric, no electric surgery is allowed. So all the, you can walk down the street and hear the sound of lips deflating. <laughs> I know, it's true. And, and Jane has joined the, the chorus of women who, it's serious, who are donating their bras to make masks. Out yeah. of this actual, this bra, Jane's bras, only for people with very large faces. Those, <laughs> it's Bill, true. Bill. Oh, it's true. It's true. I hate this. I hate to see. Nice. I hate. I hate to see this one go. Okay, this will keep it. If it didn't go, it'd be the first time I ever tried to put a drop on you. <laughs> that is I, very pretty. I like the red lace, Jane. That's very nice. I know. Later, have, later. You have any? Uh, you want to try out any material about the virus? Huh? Well, I'm worried about the masks because everyone's wearing them now. And I mean, if you're a bank teller, you got to be shitting in your pants. You know, <laughs> it's been a tough time to go through that. It's a, you know, you got to cover though, because if someone sneezes on me, I will urinate on them. <laughs> I might get Corona, but they will get gonorrhea. So <laughs> you're not going to win. Don't let it happen. It's a weird time. They tell you, my, my wife's doctor said no touching, no hugging, no kissing, so really no change at our house. But <laughs> also say one of the, the symptoms is difficulty swallowing, so I'm pretty sure my wife's had it for 10 years. <laughs> was that out loud? Was that out loud? Sorry about that. <laughs> I was nervous. The first thing they canceled was the St. Patrick's Day parade in Boston and in Dublin, the two most Irish places in the world. And I'm like, why are you doing it? There's more alcohol to kill more germs at both of those events. <laughs> Nothing could survive those things. I don't know why they canceled those. But, uh, you know, other than that, it's not, oh, you know, we're trying to make. Good. Good. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was just saying, you know, we're trying to make lemonade out of lemons here. There's very few chances to get on and try these jokes out. So I appreciate the opportunity. Hey, look, Tom, we're going to be on every Friday. Um, hopefully. Good. Five o'clock. Any any time you want to come on, even if just for five minutes, and run run some stuff. Sure. Want, I'll you, tell people to tune in. Yeah, good. It, 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 how many have tuned in so far? Like three. I mean, um, down here, the only movie theater that's open is the drive-in movie theater. I know they're bringing yeah. those back. Here's here is this is what was there. It's up to date. Shrek is playing. Jane and I went. <laughs> Jane and I have been together ten years. We went to the drive-in movie. And when it was over, I said, well, that's the most we necked in like eight years. <laughs> Just get in your car. You got to. How do you neck when you got a, a bra over your face? I don't know how you do that. <laughs> oh, Tom, tell us about, uh, we're going to wind things down here. Uh, it's great that you were generous enough to come for our first show. Thrilled to be here. Honored. I really am. I really appreciate it. And again, Love it's our job to bring levity to people, and you're giving them an outlet to do that. So <laughs> kudos to you guys. Honestly, truth, just want to entertain the folks. Just, yeah. A week ago tonight, Jane and I had dinner. And I said, you know what? I just want to do a show where I talk to funny people, and show clips. And Jeff, God bless him, Commander, made it happen. I don't know if there's ever been another show live on YouTube that, that, that's showing clips at the same time. But anyway, tell folks about your book, Bad Dad. If they want to laugh, they, should, they could order that. They can. I will say this, though. I was on a show on uh, uh, Huckabee is a, a minister used to be the governor of Arkansas has a show on uh, uh, TBN, I think is the network. And it's a really a, formerly an all religious network. His show still draws primarily born again Christians. And he thought he was doing me a favor. But at the end of my set, he held up my book and offered it so people to buy it. And I'm telling people, if you're a born again Christian or a devout Muslim, this is not the book for you. I don't think Spike here. Yeah. yeah, put it down and back away slowly, uh, because people were uh, offended when they read. You know, some of the uh, those people are very touchy anyway. So uh, I want to make sure that people know if they buy it, it does have some uh, politically incorrect things in it. And so just be careful. But order Spike the Wonder Dog first, and then this well, will be know, the. I don't, where my little, I don't know where my little card is. Where I put it, but. My book actually has a, a let me have a card, Jane. Has a, a politically incorrect humor warning on the cover of the book. Smart. I should have done that. You know, the, I hope, I don't want to be too serious here, when this is all over, what's that sound, Jane? I hope when this is all over that 
we can get back to a time where everybody is not so sensitive. Oh. You know, it's okay to joke about stuff. It's okay to pull out a stereotype. It's okay to do some cultural appropriation that we went through way worse than being so sensitive and being offended. But because people have been, that's why literally I put that little warning right there on the cover of the book. Very smart, very astute. I should have done that. If you, if, if something in there annoys you, if you think it's being sexist or this or that or the other thing, you're warned. That's it. Anything else? To your, to your point, though, about political correctness, you're absolutely right. The pendulum has swung so far oh. that now, I mean, Seinfeld wrote that op-ed to the Times a couple of years ago saying he will never work at a college again because it's these millennial kids that just come to the show waiting for you to utter that one syllable that's going to send them into a tizzy. And then they go on social media and eviscerate you. And then people who weren't even at the show jump into the fray and they're taking the joke out of context. And if Seinfeld's pissing you off, then the rest of us are doomed because he's squeaky clean. You know what, Tom? Here's a good point to add on. What you just said in the context of our new reality looks ridiculous. You're right. It just looks ridiculous. And on that serious note, we're gonna, we're gonna wrap up, we're gonna wrap up Trap Live. Next week we have Lucy Arnaz. Have you ever met Lucy? Lucy? I have at the Lucy Fest, yeah. And uh, yeah. she's great. That's cool. She'll be our guest next week. Jeff, I want to thank you. The commander landed the, you landed us on time. Thank you. My pleasure. And Tom, thank you for putting up with some of the technical details of the first uh, first episode. Thank you for walking this moron through it. I appreciate it. Not a moron. As you know, my wife and I come to see you a lot, and you're one of our favorites. We think you're brilliant and funny and wonderful, as is Carrie, your wife. Uh, and uh, we really appreciate you being the very first. Good to see fellow friars still out there swinging it away. We're we swinging are. Them. Thank you. And uh, I don't say, I don't say stay safe. This is what I say: stay careful. Stay careful, everybody. Smart. Keep your guard up at all times. And thanks for watching. Thank you for watching. And remember, Spike the Wonder Dog is available for pre-order on Amazon or at orderspike.com.